Hi, Todd Dunn here on November 25th, 2018. This is my first video in just over a month. I apologize for the negligence and not putting anything new up, but I've been busy doing other things. Anyway, I wanted to start putting up some more videos now, and today's video is actually a slideshow that I will narrate. And what it is, is the rebuild of the cabin house on my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga. I did this four years ago in the fall, so four years ago right now I was working on it, but that's before I had a camera that could shoot video, so basically we were restricted to just taking pictures. Anyway, I want to go through why I decided to rebuild the cabin house, and then I'll walk you through the process. Let's start this by taking a look at what Tortuga looked like at the beginning of the 2014 season. Here she is out of the water. Here's the, and you can see the old cabin house with its aft facing forward face, its windows only on the front half of the cabin house, and the aft end of the cabin house was enclosed by very leaky vinyl and canvas. In addition, even though I had put a new canvas roof on the uh, hard part of the cabin house, it leaked around all the windows and basically was extremely uncomfortable in any kind of weather. So what I wanted to do was rebuild the house to get rid of the leaks and also to enclose the entire cockpit in a closed cabin house with opening windows, but still a closed cabin house. And I also wanted to make one other change, which was to change the front face of the cabin house from aft sloping to vertical, just because I liked that design element more than what was on the boat at the time I started this project. At the end of the boating season in late October 2014, we hauled the boat out and took it directly into a workshop run by my friend Hank Hinckley. Uh, he had agreed to let me have space to do the cabin house rebuild. A couple weeks before haul out, I had started work on the project already. Since I knew I was going to be building a completely new cabin house, the first step was to laminate all new beams for the cabin top. And you can see them here. I brought them over and set them out in front of the boat right after we moved it in and started painting them. There, here they are after one coat of paint. I decided to paint the beams before installing them because I really don't like painting over my head and I thought I'd get a much better job if I did the paint job before I put the cabin house beams in the boat. This is another view of the boat. Uh, right after we put it into the shop, you can see I've still got my chairs and tables set up inside the boat. And uh, first thing I did was clean everything out of the cabin house and get ready to start working. Move the canvas enclosure from the back of the cabin house, and you can see it here. So that shows you what the hard cabin looked like. Basically, on each side I had three windows and then an open space and finally an aft beam supporting the cabin top and then an open rear cockpit. Now this was a nice setup on nice days but when it rained the cabin house would get very wet and that water would get into the boat and as we all know fresh water is the bane of any wooden boat. With the canvas off I got started on a project. The first step was to remove all the glass from the windows. That went pretty well, with the exception of the forward window on the port side, uh, which broke when I took it out. Other than that, I was able to get all the windows out without any damage, which didn't really matter because I threw them away. Uh, at that point, I could start taking the cabin house off. So I got out my sawzall and cut the back end of the cabin top off. I quickly found out when I did that that it was too heavy to carry down the ladder off of the boat so I had to cut it in half and as I moved forward I 
gradually removing the cabin top, I each section in two parts. These pictures show the process of gradually cutting the cabin top off and getting rid of the uprights and finally removing the lower parts of the cabin sides. Basically one of the things I discovered during this process was that the cabin house was essentially sitting on the hull and was only held in place by about uh, 16 nails and uh, other than that only the weight of the house kept it on the boat was off the boat once I got the cabin house off the boat I got started with the rebuild the first thing I did was to get rid of the old canvas decks by stripping them off and rebuilding them with new Port Orford cedar and then I epoxied down a layer of 532nd marine plywood on top of the cedar planking uh, the epoxying was done by putting down the epoxy, laying the plywood on, and then screwing through the plywood into the cedar about every three inches with a pan head screw. Once the epoxy kicked, I backed the screws out and filled all the holes with thickened epoxy and then sanded the whole thing fair. And this is what the new deck looked like after I was finished. With the deck finished, I got started building the house proper. This picture shows the vertical beams that support the cabin house in place, with the exception of the forward beams uh, at the front end of the cabin house. I'll get to those later. The forward four beams on each side are pieces of 5 4 by 4 clear vertical grain Douglas fir that are screwed into uh, the edge of the deck and also to a cleat that I put in directly below the edge of the deck uh, and screwed to the cabin sole. The beams at the aft end of the house are actually mahogany. They're uh, one by four mahogany that I glued together to form an L-shaped beam. In this picture, you can also see the top longitudinal beams that will support the athwart ship's cabin top beams. Those longitudinals are just clamped to the uprights at this point. And at the forward and aft ends of the cabin house, I also have two of my laminated cabin top beams clamped in place. This is basically just a mock-up of what the shape of the house will be. This picture shows the cabin house after I've actually started assembling it. Everything here is screwed in place, uh, including two forward corner posts for the cabin house. Like the aft corner posts, those are L-shaped mahogany that I glued together from two pieces of 1x4 mahogany. The uh, posts that support the cabin top, you can see that I have filled the gaps between the uh, verticals with a 5 4 by 4 Douglas fir in the forward area and with a 1 by 4 mahogany aft. The mahogany was used aft because that will be visible from inside the cabin house uh, when the project is finished. Forward, the uh, fir will be sheathed with mahogany inside and outside. The purpose of this is to form a sort of clamp along the edge of the deck. This is screwed to the inside edge of the deck and then I fiberglassed the deck with a layer of 10 ounce fiberglass cloth set in uh, epoxy and I ran the fiberglass cloth up onto my clamp by about two inches to prevent leaks from water running down the outside of the cabin house and going underneath the edges of the house. So that is uh, just a little protection. And here we are a little further along in the cabin house build. You can see that I have all my pre-painted laminated cabin top beams in place. They are sitting on top of the fore and aft uh, support beams and are screwed to those beams at each end and have been cut to length. And I've also gone around the top of the cabin house and put in the mahogany sheathing. The reason to that was to get the final dimension of the top of the cabin house. On top of the cabin house, 
I've also started to put down the actual cabin top planking. For that, I'm using 1x4 tongue and groove Douglas fir beadboard. And that is pre-painted on the inside, again, because I don't like to paint over my head. And I thought I'd do a better job if I painted those planks before screwing them down. Each plank is screwed down to every one of the laminated cabin top beams with a stainless steel screw. And I've also got some additional facing at the bottom of the cabin house in the forward part of the house. The aft large opening will be uh, an access door on each side, so it's going to have a slightly different treatment than the forward part of the house, which will just be fixed windows. This picture shows the forward vertical face of the new cabin house, which is set up to have three windows in it. The plan was to have the outboard windows fixed and the center window and opening window. This forward face of the house is built 100% from mahogany and it will be faced with additional mahogany inside after it's completed. The cabin house with all of the cabin top planking in place. At this point I've also trimmed the uh, outside edges of the planks to uh, match the uh, shape of the uh, cabin sides. I have not yet trimmed the fore and aft ends of the cabin top planking. This picture shows an inside view of the cabin top and you can see the benefit of pre-painting all the wood before installation. As soon as I screwed the last plank down and trimmed the outer edges, the cabin top was finished. No painting required at this point. Build was to put on all of the external mahogany sheathing since this cabin house is going to be a bright finished mahogany house. Where I have multiple mahogany planks stacked on top of each other, they are edge glued together with epoxy. I also put splines in them to make sure that they'll not come apart. So this is the house aft, the way it's going to look at the end. There's about a three inch overhang aft and a six inch overhang in front. And on the sides, at this point, the house, the cabin top is flush with the sides of the house. If you look closely at the forward end of the cabin top here, you can also see that I've started gluing down a layer of 532nds marine plywood on top of the fur tongue and groove cabin top planking. That's to give me a smooth surface because I do intend a little bit later in this process to fiberglass the cabin top. Cabin house after the major exterior construction is finished. In this picture, if you look at the top edge of the cabin house, I've put a trim strip all the way around the top of the house and finished fiberglassing the cabin top. The fiberglass goes over the top of the trim strip so there won't be any leaking between the actual cabin top and the trim strip. I've also put a coat of Pettit Red Mahogany Stain on all of the mahogany and started varnishing. I think at this point I've probably got about four coats of varnish on the mahogany. So from here on, the next step is to start building the windows. All of the windows are made from uh, safety glass and they have mahogany frames. This is the forward face of the new cabin house with the windows in place. The outboard windows on either side are fixed and the center window opens out. It has a full length piano hinge along the top edge. So it cantilevers out from the top. The picture shows a view of the rest of the house with all of the windows in place. If we start at the forward window here on the port side and move aft, we have a fixed window. The second window aft is an opening window. Then we have two fixed windows. The large window is an opening window and it's intended as an entry door. Uh, over the winter, after I finished this part of the project, I decided to make that into double doors, as you'll see in the picture of the finished cabin house that I'll show you next. 
Across the back of the house, we have a small vertical fixed window, uh, two opening windows, and another vertical fixed windows. And the starboard side is the same as the port side. Altogether, the cabin house has 19 windows. After I finished the windows, we uh, put the boat in storage for the winter. It had been in the shop for about six weeks. I did the project 100% by myself, and I also built it only from a mental picture. I don't use plans for this sort of thing. So, we'll go back. Here's what the boat looked like before I started this project. This picture shows what the boat looked like after the project was finished. Everything has got about eight coats of varnish now, and the cabin top trim edge is painted. I put the name boards back on, and everything is done. I also, after I finished the exterior work, went back and faced all of the fur inside the boat with mahogany and varnished it. So now I have a cabin house that covers the entire cockpit and is weather tight. And this, to me, is an improvement. I particularly like the vertical front face as opposed to the previously sloped front face. Whether or not you think this is an improvement over what I had, well, that's your opinion. I like it though. And this is the way the boat is now and presumably will stay for some time into the future. I think the construction will hold up for quite a while. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'd appreciate a subscription to my channel if you haven't already subscribed. Thanks again for watching.